The gospel got to go to my heart. Comes from Luke 6, 17 through 26. It's titled Blessings and Woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal regions around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you who woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I give grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. God, is it my time to receive? That sounds like a simple question, right? What if I said, God, when is it my time to receive? Do you notice how one word can change a whole sentence? In the first one, I'm asking, Lord, is it my time? You are the keeper. It's up to you to let me know. Let me know so when you are ready, I'm ready. In the meantime, we'll be watching and waiting. Because when we go to the other sentence, Lord, when is it my time? It changes it from asking a simple question to saying, I want an answer of when I'll be fulfilled, made whole, given to, whatever. As I said, it's amazing how that simple word, when, it can change the whole thought. And maybe the person in the second question wasn't being forceful. Maybe it's not an entitlement question, but just a more of a need to be in control. A control to know exactly when. The obvious thing is, the first is an invitation for God to respond. The second has more of a expectation to a response. So, probably wonder where I'm going with this. Well, in life, we need to always be aware of our, our thoughts and our words. It can cause us much grief when we portray an image of one thing and really mean another. As I said, the first question seemed very helpful. The second seemed a little more forceful, maybe inward focus. And that is how the image that other people will see is affected. So that in mind, let's see all the question. What do you think God thinks when he looks at you? Does he see a humble receiver of gifts? Or does he see somebody expecting what they get and maybe wanting more? As our song says, do you live like your love? Like everything you have is a gift from God? 
or do you find yourself living like you've been ripped off in life? Like God really has never given you your share? You know, that's a real question. It drives people from God. People truly feel that they've been oh, short of me, that God has given somebody else more. Why doesn't he give me anything? So why should I stick around? I mean, they get angry. I have lived it here at Living Word in that office. I had some young people come in and say, God doesn't love us. He doesn't take care of us, or we wouldn't be here needing help from the minister. And I told them, it's true. In life, we, we see people who seem to have a lot. And we see people who truly have very little. God isn't the one that puts his mark on that. That actually comes from us, ourselves. See, here in this country, we have more than we, we can understand. That was something I tried to explain to them. They were in a tight spot right now, but they were still driving a beautiful car. They had a house. They just were in a short spot. And it wasn't because God didn't love them. It was just one of those trials in life. No. And I tried to explain to him the Lord's Prayer. There's a passage in the Lord's Prayer that we kind of blow right over sometimes we don't understand. We pray, lead us not into temptation. The Lord Jesus asks us to to ask our Father to not lead us into temptation. And Jesus gave us that part of the prayer for a reason. He knew that we would get distracted by all the tempting things in this world. All the distractions that take our focus off God and put it on looking at our neighbors. When we start breaking that commandment that God gave us, thou shalt not covet. So Jesus knew this was going to happen. So he says, when you pray, ask God to help you not fall into temptation. Don't get too deep into your stuff. No, that's the hard part. To try to talk to somebody about the fact that are we blessed more when we got some when we got stuff or will we do it now? It's a tough question to get to talk to people about in this in this world. In this country especially. You know, Jim and I went to Haiti. We saw the poorest people on earth in person. They were right there with us. We saw people that had nothing. No water, no decent shelter. They had so little compared to us. And I think back when we went, oh, believe me, Gene and I didn't have enough money to be doing it. I mean, airplane tickets were expensive. Spending money for the travel, well, that was kind of unheard of. But we went anyway. We felt God was sending us out. And we, when we got there, we found ourselves being rich Americans. And that really got me because I've never been rich in my life. As far as financial status, I've never felt rich in any way. But in Haitian Sanders, we were filthy rich. But as 
I look back and as I lived down there, I realized that we were rich in material things. So they really didn't know me inside that well yet. I was just starting faith again. But after meeting so many faithful, loving, God-fearing, Christian Haitian people who worshiped in tents, sitting on two by twelves on cinder blocks, and happy as could be that they had some place inside to, to worship. We realized something. The longer we were there, the richer we were getting. By the time we left, we were truly rich. It wasn't money or stuff. It was our faith in our God. We found our value in our faith, not in our stuff. And I look back and I never want to forget that experience. I never want to be poor in my faith again like I was. Rich in stuff and poor in faith gets you nowhere in the world. We really realized while we were there it wasn't what they had that made them absolute wealthy people. It was who they knew that made them special. It wasn't when they would be given something. It was truly if. They would be given anything. We worked on a water well. Kind of isolated back in the back. We had to walk by ways to get there. And there were some huts, if you will, close to it. And there was a woman that played her little transistor radio. She sat outside her hut and played that radio while we were working to try to make our, our work more enjoyable. Her batteries, our translator told us, were worth more than gold because that was actually the only way they could get weather forecasts and, and to hear what was going to happen. But like he said, she probably couldn't get batteries again for six months. Who knew? Because things as simple as batteries in Haiti are almost non-existent for the for the average people. But she had something to give us to make us smile while we worked and sweated. And believe we we sweat. Wow. But one of the reasons that my my faith just filled up down there. I went over to thank her for playing that for us. And all she did was look up and she said, thank you. And then she looked up and said, thank Jesus. It brought, it brought this, it, it just stopped in my tracks. She said, thank Jesus for you. And I'm going, who am I? Just some not head fixing a water well. But she knew God had sent us to give her water. Her words and actions so showed such joy. Getting that well repaired close to her hut that you couldn't question what she was thinking. She was truly going to be blessed by that drink of water. Something we don't even think about most of the time. No, we heard thank Jesus quite often down there. A country speaking a different language, but they could say they would tell us, thank you, thank Jesus, thank Jesus for you. 
And even at that, there were others who were very rude and angry towards us. Even as we were giving them free help and the best of our ability, they hated us for having things that they didn't have. Their actions showed it. Their actions were absolutely anger. So again, we go back to the question, what did God see in their actions and thoughts? Were they living like they were loved? Like the first lady? Or were they living like God ripped them off? I mean, that's something we don't think about once in a while. Our sin makes us look inward instead of upward. See, Jesus preached on that topic many times. Understanding God's gifts over our expectations in life. In our gospel tonight, Jesus tells us how people will be looked at in the final times. Verses 20 through 23, looking at the disciples, said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son. And finally, verse 23, Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they, their ancestors treated the prophets. Wow, so we read that and Again, the first question that comes up is if I'm poor and hungry and weeping and people hate me, am I better off? What in the world is Jesus saying? And the answer to that question is it's definitely in this world. In this world, we're told that that list of trials is considered ugly. It's disgusting to have any of those problems. We like being filled up, fat and happy. But as Jesus told us to pray and to be careful, for when we're fat and happy, we lose our focus on God and His gifts. We soon forget why we're here and become Nothing other than lost, fat sheep heading for Satan's slaughterhouse. Instead of trying to help others, help others find peace and show them love, we wallow in our own, our own little world. Jesus is telling us that when we are without now, we will enjoy so much more later will be filled in his time. Our question, is it time to receive? Jesus says, yes, when I call you. Or, Lord, when is it my time to receive? And Jesus says, well, you can have it all right now. And then there will be none for you later. That's why it's we have to start thinking different. And it's hard. Because that's not what we've talked for most of our lives. But Jesus' own words, verses 24 through 26. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how the ancestors treated the false prophets. In other words, it's all going to level up. God's going to provide equally for everyone. 
But when God takes over, when God's kingdom comes, we're going to quit trying to get the other guys because he's not going to run with it. So when Jesus asks, them, are you laughing too much now? He's not talking about joy. He's talking about laughing at, not with. When he asks the major question, does the world love you for hating God? Which is unfortunately where our world has really been tracking lately. We have to be careful because times are going to change and it's going to be different. We need to be the one with the invitation in our words. God, is it my time? And quit living with expectations of God, when is it my time? It's it's going to be hard. Our sin tells us to do it. But we can do it. We can do it. We gotta live like we're loved. Like every moment is from God. It doesn't matter what we have. It's what we know. And that's him. So as the Haitian woman told me, thank Jesus for you. Thank Jesus. Let the words that were right in your heart be the sense of love. Oh, let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, there's nothing wrong with, with having, but when it takes our focus off you, that's when we lose. Lord, you told us in, in the prayer that we pray that it's not in temptation. We have to understand what that means. That we shouldn't try to get too much, just what we need. Because in the end, all that extra here is not going to make much difference. Because when we go there, we're going to be asking, is it my time to receive? Not when. Oh Lord, continue to guide us and keep us. Just continue to watch over us and and give us your give us your plan. Help us to watch and wait for your plan. Uh, thank you for being our guest. We just pray this all in your holy, holy name.